The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all along the region Along the Jordan, they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up to children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as you heard in our Advent devotion a little earlier, that are in our confirmation service here at Abiding Presence and in all our Lutheran churches, um, we hear the words of Isaiah in chapter 11 as we lay the, our hands on those persons uh, being confirmed. And we also use this passage as we bless people who are being baptized during their baptism. So I believe that these are words worth repeating often because they're words that we've all been blessed with in our baptism, and they apply to each of us. So from chapter 11, a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So each of us in our baptism is called to do the mighty things that Isaiah speaks of in the rest of this passage in 11. To judge with righteousness and equity among all people, to live righteously, and to bring peace on the earth. Which would be a big order, it seems. (laughs) But what we often forget is that the Spirit of the Lord is resting on each one of us. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We have all we need to work for justice and faithfulness and peace on earth. And the fear of the Lord isn't being about being afraid, which seems strange since we use the word fear, but it's a lot more about respect and love and acknowledgement of God's authority. So much like the way we would fear a parent which isn't really fear, it's just the acceptance of their authority and wanting to do the right thing. Before we go on, please hear me say that in baptism, God gives us all we need to work for justice and faithfulness and peace. And so now I want to turn our attention to the Romans passage for this morning. It begins with, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. And it ends with, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the passage begins and ends in a spirit of hope, that all that has been written or told would bring us hope through the steadfastness and encouragement of God. As we look towards Christmas, this Advent season, we worship with a spirit of hopefulness, just as these passages bring out. And the best part 
is that in this particular reading, we're actually given some clue as to what it looks like, what we're supposed to do. In the middle of the passage, it says, May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together with one voice we may glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. So to have hope and live in steadfastness and encouragement We are to live in harmony with one another and together as one voice glorifying God. We're to welcome others as Jesus welcomed us. And how has Jesus welcomed us? Christ loved us and has forgiven us, loves us and has forgiven us all our sin. And Christ has loved like no other, sacrificing his life for another As we read earlier this year in Luke's gospel, no greater love has someone who gives their life for someone else. And finally, Christ has come, Emmanuel, God with us, to live amongst us. We don't have a God that just sits high in the sky over us and ruling and judging. God with us, Emmanuel, came to live amongst us, teaching and healing and eating with, performing miracles for, forgiving and showing us how to live and loving us. And then Christ, God with us, died for our sake. Christ welcomed all people, including those not normally welcomed, like the Gentiles or the sick, or the foreigner, or the sinner, or the poor, or even females sometimes. Christ welcomed all people, treated all people with the righteousness, equity, and peace that we're called to treat others with. And remember, we have all we need to do that. We have what we need to welcome all and bring hope into the world in Christ's name and love. So I want to segue for just a moment now to bring into the picture how we, people of abiding presence, do all these things that we've read about in scripture today. We are all in baptism given gifts by the Holy Spirit with which we share with the world. In our church, we have people who cook, people who assist and lead worship, people who pray, people who share musical gifts, people who care for the poor, people who advocate for the poor. There are so many ways. I probably haven't even listed half of what we do here. Everybody shares their gifts in different ways. And there are so many more ways that we could share our gifts if we could just tap into our own call from baptism. But today I want to especially uplift one gift. Our Stephen ministers work hard to bring harmony to people through comfort and care. They encourage their care receivers by listening and praying with them and for them, and they help welcome all and let people know that even in hard times, when maybe we don't feel worthy, God is with us and we still belong. We always belong. The presence of a Stephen minister is a representation of God's love so that all who need care know God's love through that person. So as we continue to celebrate in this season of Advent, celebrate hope, waiting for the celebration of God's incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us on earth, may we all be reminded that we have been given the gifts to serve others with justice and equity and to welcome all people and bring (coughs) peace to the world. In fact, we are all welcome into God's kingdom. And this is the hope that we share in the season of Advent. May it also be the hope that you share with others every day. Amen.